You want to find that drive and focus that has you locked in and on fire every single day? My book, The Mirror Motivation, will do it for you. I bought a copy for you. You take care of the shipping. The book is free. Click the link down there. I got you. Stay all day. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, yes, you get even more. You get a huge dose of personal initiative. This is a go-getter energy that moves all of us to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all this together and what you get is the mindset, the method, the philosophy, the book, the podcast known as Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic, we're gonna talk about some energies that you must learn to control. Now, energy is a really important thing. I've said before here that energy is 85% of the job. You don't have any energy then you pretty much, you're not going to be able to get anything done. I mean, if you didn't have energy, you couldn't have even pressed the button to listen to this. If you don't have energy, you're not going to get out of bed. You're not going to move yourself to action. You definitely won't be able to uh, exercise discipline on yourself because there'll be times when there are some things you don't quite maybe feel like doing and with no energy, you won't be able to exercise the discipline to actually get yourself to do those things anyway. There are probably things you've done already today that if you could skip doing them, you would have skipped them, but you had enough energy to exercise that discipline. Discipline requires a little bit of willpower, and if you have no energy, it'll be impossible for you to for you to utilize willpower. And energy doesn't necessarily have to be doesn't necessarily have to be the positive kind of energy. I mean, some types of energies that we may not want often move us to action quicker than the energies that we do want. Maybe you've experienced that before. There was some feeling that you didn't want to feel, but because you were feeling that energy, you actually took some action that maybe you wouldn't have taken before. Maybe that you were just a little bit too complacent about taking simply because the energy hadn't hit you yet. So energy, even in its negative forms and the forms in which maybe we don't want it, let's just put it that way, since any energy we could look at as a positive or a negative, it can all be utilized in some way, shape, or form. So we need it in some format at all times, anything, anything that we must do. Today, I want to point out three specific energies that I think, generally speaking, we look at as energies that we don't want, energies that we want to kind of stay away from most of the time, energies that are not always productive for most of us on the average day, the average individual who's listening to this. But I'm going to tell you how you can start to channel these energies and control these energies because even though we may not want them doesn't mean that they're not going to happen they probably will happen maybe you're dealing with them right now once i get into them you'll understand whether you are or you're not i'm sure you've dealt with them before and you probably will on some level deal with these three specific energies sometime in the future so let's get into what they are why they exist and what we can actually do with them, how we can utilize them and get them to work in our favor instead of having them slow us down or work against us or speed us up headed in the wrong direction, which we don't want. So sometimes slowing down might be a good thing. Sometimes speeding up is not always the good thing if it, we're speeding up going somewhere we don't want to go. If that energy, if that emotion grabs the control of the steering wheel, the metaphor that I've used before, and we don't want our, our energies or our emotions to grab the steering wheel of our minds. We want them to be the gas pedal and we control the gas pedal and the brakes. You don't want them controlling which direction you go because it can be going a direction that once you get a chance to think logically is probably not where you would want to be. So let's get into it. Three specific energies that you must learn to control. The first one is fear. Now I've done a lot of talking about fear on this podcast over the years. I've, there are eight specific episodes, eight episodes of the show where fear is actually in the title of the episode. Now, I talk, talk about or touch on fear probably in about 250 episodes, but there are eight of them specifically where what we talk directly about fear. One of the most recent ones was episode number 1207 titled, Do Not Settle for Good Enough Out of Fear That You Won't Find Better. Fear has its place for human beings, right? We understand that it keeps us safe and it keeps us reasonably cautious. I mean, reasonably enough that not so cautious that we don't try to do anything. Well, maybe for some of us that we take it too far, but reasonably cautious, such as let's not you know, try to play running across the street as fast as we can on a highway, because even if you win, what did you actually gain? If you lose, you stand to lose a whole lot more than you stand to gain, even if you were to succeed in that game. So that's where fear 
at its baseline level, if it's working for us at a healthy level, that's what fear does. It keeps us reasonably cautious that we can weigh the benefits versus the cost of any chances that we take, any risks that we take and ask ourselves. Again, any logical, sane thinking person can ask themselves, all right, what do I stand to gain from this and what do I stand to lose from this, whether it goes right or wrong, respectively, and we can be fearful enough to know when we're making a bad decision. However, for many of us, that fear starts to go haywire, starts to take control of us in ways that it shouldn't be taking control of us because we haven't learned to control it ourselves. So for many of us, because our daily lives are relatively safe, for the most part, we're never forced to run across a highway where cars are going 80 miles per hour and see if we can beat them on foot from one side to the other before that car crosses our path. Our daily lives are relatively safe. Right? We don't walk out of our house, houses and feel like we're in danger. Right? Now, while that doesn't mean that things can't happen to us, for the most part, we don't risk our lives every single day when we go outside, most of us. So this fear that is just part of the human animal, it finds other ways to displace itself. It finds other ways to rear its head where we don't even need it when we don't even need it and what happens for many people is that it makes us unreasonably fearful of situations of people of outcomes that are not even inherently dangerous but we see danger in them simply because the fear that is within us which we haven't learned to control obviously is causing us to see fear in things in which we don't really need to be seeing it so this is how you come across people or maybe you become a person who's afraid of having conversations with other people. Or maybe they're a certain person or certain types of people that you don't like talking to or certain situations in which you're afraid of making direct contact with another individual. Maybe there's a salesperson out there who is afraid of making cold phone calls because for whatever reason, you're afraid of what's going to happen with that other person on the other end of the phone. Maybe you're afraid of contacting someone and asking for asking directly for what you want. Maybe you're afraid of demanding what you want from someone who is supposed to be giving it to you and they haven't delivered. Maybe you have some fear of committing. Fear of commitment. There are a lot of ways you can fear commitment. Maybe in joining an organization, maybe in taking a job, maybe quitting a job that you don't want to be in, maybe in getting into a relationship, maybe committing to investing some time or money into something that you know would help you, but your fear of the loss, your scarcity mindset, that fear of giving up something is keeping you from being able to obtain anything because you're not willing to make an exchange because you don't want to give anything up. You just want to get, but you don't want to give. So all of these are fears of commitment, but these are all different types, just some examples of ways that fear finds its way into our lives, into our psyches, because it doesn't have anything else to pay attention to. There's no saber tooth tiger trying to kill us. We're not at war. We don't have a rival, no, rival gang or rival tribe from across the street or across town showing up every day trying to chop our heads off. So we have to figure out a way to utilize this fear or to displace the fear because we haven't ever thought about how we can control and channel it. And this is what happens with a lot of people. Maybe I've described you in some ways. Maybe I've described some people whom you've come across and there are a bunch of other ways that fear finds its way out of us as human beings when we don't learn to control it. I just gave you a few examples. But since we understand that there is no inherent danger in these examples that I've given, making some kind of commitment with your time or your money. Now, while you may lose, you may not end up getting the outcome that you want. There's nothing to be afraid of. You're not going to get injured. You're not going to get thrown in jail. You're not going to get killed. Even if you make these bad decisions, even if you lose some money that you invested, if you make a phone call, somebody doesn't like it and they hang up on you, nothing bad is going to happen to you. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. You ask someone a question, they just might say no. Or you talk to someone, they just might ignore you. But there's no further consequence besides that. So since there are, there's no inherent danger in these things and any of the other everyday stuff that I haven't mentioned that causes fear in people on an unreasonable level, we notice that it's seeping into and out of us because we're not taking control of it. This is gonna to continue to happen to you and whoever else may have these problems if we don't take control of the fear. We don't learn to control these energies. So the better you learn to control your fear and learn to channel your fear into action rather than into inaction, many things are gonna happen. I heard someone once say that fear is an indication not of what you should not do, it's, a fear, it's an indication of what you should do. So when you feel fear, it's letting you know that there's something that for whatever reason you're seeing some imminent danger in it 
there's a good possibility, and I like this, this phrase that this person said, there's a good possibility that there is no imminent danger in it. And that's why you're feeling the fear, simply because we don't have too many imminent dangers in our lives. So you feel imminent danger in things which are not actually dangerous. But because human beings, us being emotional and the fact that we attach a story to damn near everything that happens to us, especially emotions, especially certain types of energies, which we haven't learned to control. We create a story in our mind that there is some danger in something. And if you tell yourself a story often enough and strongly enough and you actually believe it, you're going to start living out that story. Like, yes, it, there is danger in me making this phone call. There is danger in me asking this person on the date. There is danger in me uh, pitching my product. There is danger in me publishing a YouTube video. There is danger in me trying to do A, B, C, D, E, F, any of the things that you've seen. I mean, you, you have lived life long enough. You've seen some people have some unreasonable fears of things that they have no reason to be afraid of. You yourself have been afraid of things that you have no reasonable explanation for being afraid of. And this is why I just explained it because we have, we have to have that fear go somewhere. And because we attach a story to everything that happens to us and the story does not have to make sense the story does not have to be reasonable it does not have to be logical we don't have to explain it to anyone else and even if we do and they laugh at us and tell us that story makes no sense that's most of the time that makes us believe it even more right we be, get defensive because people are attacking our stories and we take that as a personal affront so these are all ways that we start to uh, justify our unreasonable fears and it's not because we're dumb is because we've never thought of the fact that we must learn to control these energies. But guess what? Today is your lucky day because you listen to the Work On Your Game podcast and Dre Baldwin is here explaining to you that you need to start taking control of your fears and maybe start examining some of these uh, illogical, not helpful stories that you have in your mind that you have attached to these emotions that you have not learned to control. So once you learn to do so, you will start leveraging your fear because again, fear is often an indication of, indication of what you should do rather than what you shouldn't do. That's what I was explaining a moment ago before I went off on that little tangent there, which I tend to do. When you're feeling fear of something, ask yourself, is this really an imminent danger? Nine times out of 10, you're gonna say no, because it's not, if you're thinking logically. If you're not thinking logically, go find somebody to follow you around all day and let them tell you whether you're thinking logically or not. Make sure they are a logical person, not someone who's just gonna co-sign your uh, foolish emotions when they're not making sense for you. Understand it is probably not an imminent danger that you're facing, which means you're feeling some fear that it doesn't, there's, there's nothing bad is going to happen to you, which means you probably should go do that thing, which means all you're really looking at is not something that's going to injure you or kill you or throw you in prison, but you're looking at something that is maybe a little bit outside of your comfort zone. Now, that's why you feel the fear. But stepping outside of your comfort zone is not going to injure you. It actually make you better, but you got to be able to break through, as Bob Proctor calls it, the terror barrier, the terror barrier barrier if you don't know who bob proctor is if you ever watched the movie the secret he was prominent in that but he has a lot of you know, he's done a lot of seminars and books and he's big in self-help he's one of the legends of the self-help industry he's an older guy now but he's been around for decades doing the self-help stuff so if you look up bob proctor he's got a lot of good material that i take in myself but he's the one who i got that phrase from the terror barrier which is the exact same thing as stepping outside of your comfort zone you feel terror when you get to the edge of that comfort zone that's the terror barrier terror barrier that i'm talking about right here say that five times fast so you face down the normal fears that stop most people in their tracks, which is, again, just approaching it, the edge of their comfort zone. And then you have a leg up on everyone else who allows fear to slow them down or stop them, which leads to point number two. Today's topic, once again, are the energies that you must learn to control. The second energy is anxiety. Now, I've talked about anxiety in several episodes of the Work On Your Game podcast. And for those of you who don't know, in the game group membership, you can get access to every episode that has ever been published of this podcast. We're talking over 800 hours of material, and this is not some cookie cutter material. I shouldn't even have to explain to you what kind of material you get on the show. If you have never heard of me before today, and you've only been listening for the last 15 minutes, understand that this is the kind of material you get every single day. So if you want over 1,300 of those, 800 hours of it, just go to workonmygame.com slash game group. And you get access to all of the material that's ever come out on this podcast, plus a whole bunch of other stuff that we'll talk about later. So anyway, on point number two, anxiety. In episode number 1109, I talked about deleting anxiety, deleting your unreasonable anxiety over the uncertainties of the future. 
because let's face it all of the future is uncertain there may be certain things you're pretty sure are going to happen some things you're kind of 50 50 on and there are some things that are going to happen in your future that you right now have no idea that they're going to happen but they are going to happen and that thought could cause you to feel happy that cause you to feel excitement right excited like hey something great is going to happen somebody's going to give me a call and it's going to be you know somebody offering me a whole lot of money somebody's not going to knock on my door and it's going to be ed mcmahon with one of those big checks remember ed mcmahon when they would give you those those checks because you won some kind of sweepstakes back in the day some of y'all remember that that can be the energy that you feel excitement over a 50 50 situation man if this works out man even if this doesn't go the way that i want it it'll be a great experience however this one's going to turn out i'm going to have new knowledge i'm going to have gone through this i'll be able to talk about it later and look back on it at some point in my life all of those are feelings of excitement someone's thinking that way or talking that way they're feeling excitement but at the exact same time the exact same situation, the person could feel differently. Man, somebody's going to knock on my door and it might be the landlord because I didn't pay the rent or it might be the cops because I committed some crime 10 years ago and they finally tracked me down. Somebody's going to call my phone and it's going to be a bill collector asking about some bill that I didn't pay 10 years ago and they finally found where I was and now they're going to keep calling my phone until I pay that bill. Or somebody's going to want to have a talk with me and they're going to fire me from my job or kick me off the team or question me about something that I said that they didn't like or I'm going to run into this problem or I don't know what's going to happen in the future. It's probably going to be something bad. It's probably going to be a rainstorm. It'll probably be some natural disaster that messes up my house. Something's going to happen to one of my kids. A person's going to be want to argue with me and I won't be able to say anything back to them. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm, what, what I want you to understand is this. Excitement and anxiety are the exact same energy. When you call yourself being excited, usually when we say excited, we mean it in a positive way, right? But listen, fear is excitement too. You're excited just in a way that you don't want to be excited. Anxiety is also excitement, but we usually don't say, if we're anxious about something that we think may go the wrong way, we don't say, man, I'm excited about you know, this, this phone call that I got to have, or I'm excited about this meeting I got to have with the boss after I cussed out one of the supervisors. You don't say that's excitement. You feel ang anxious about it, anxiety, but they're the same energy. We just give them different labels. We call it anxiety when we're not quite sure and we think something negative may happen. We call it excitement when we're not quite sure and we think something positive will happen or we're hoping that something positive will happen, but they are the exact same thing. You can, these labels are interchangeable. So if I'm thinking I'm going to get a big surprise tomorrow and it's going to be something good because, you know, it's going to be my birthday tomorrow. And I know somebody's going to get me a, a great gift because I gave them a list of things I wanted. And I know they're going to get at least one of them. I'm excited. Right. But I could also say I'm anxious about tomorrow and anxious doesn't have to be a bad thing. See, these are just things that we have socially accepted as this is the way that we label things. But I'm telling you all that to tell you that. Whenever you're feeling anxious or you're feeling excitement, it is the exact same part of your body that's feeling it. It's the exact same sensation. You're thinking about something coming up in the future. It's just whether you decide to label it positive or negative. And remember, every situation that happens in life is neutral. Even the ones that you don't know about yet, they are neutral. Whatever's going to happen in your future is a neutral situation. It's just the way that you decide to look at it that makes it positive or negative, that makes it excitement or anxiety. Excitement is just a positive expectation. Anxiety is a negative expectation. And anxiety is just fear in advance. That's all anxiety is. You're thinking, all right, if the bad thing happens, I don't want that to happen. So then you start feeling fearful about the bad thing that could happen that didn't even happen yet. That's what anxiety is. Anxiety is basically like taking out a payday loan on fear. That's a good metaphor right there. I know what payday loans are. It's like when you go to some, you call some number or some website or you go to some, some place they got actual stores and you show them that you make a certain amount of money every two weeks and they give you the money and then they automatically take it out of your bank account whatever day you're supposed to get paid. So you're basically getting the money before you actually got the money. And this is what you're doing when you're anxious. You are feeling fear in advance. You're taking out a loan in advance against the fear that you're going to feel next week. Now, why do this? That's a good question. That's a rhetorical question because I don't have a good answer. Actually, I do have a good answer, but what I'm making it a rhetorical question for is because you shouldn't be doing this. All right, don't take out payday loans on fear because they usually take some, they probably take a little bit of a percentage too, right? That's the only way they can make money. The thing is about anxiety, we feel anxiety over things that either A, won't even happen because again, we're time traveling into the future. We don't know if it's going to happen. It might not even happen or B, Something that even if it does happen, it won't even hurt us. 
Because of what did we already talk about with fear? Most of the things that occur in our lives are not life and death situations. Now, while you may have a couple, most things you deal with are not life and death situations, which means we don't need to feel so much fear in advance because there's really not that much to fear. There's not that much going on in our lives where it would really just be a truly tragic outcome. We may consider it tragic, relatively speaking, because we don't have these super highs and lows maybe in our lives to compare it to. But, you know, losing 50 bucks or losing a basketball game or somebody cussing you out or someone not buying your product or somebody not wanting to sell you something or you buying something that turns out to be a, a cheap ass product or whatever it is you could possibly do that ends up being what you consider to be a loss, so to speak, in your life is not a life or death situation. But you may consider it that because you don't have your baseline level of things happening. Maybe this is the most exciting. Notice that word exciting thing that's happened to you so you consider it to be so terrible but it's not really this is a matter of having perspective you want to gain better perspective i suggest you read the book called the noticer by andy andrews anxiety is time traveling time traveling means you are either dwelling on what's happened already in the past which you can't change or anticipating what's going to happen in the future which you cannot guarantee nor is it nor are you 100 percent sure it is going to happen well basically i just said the same thing twice you don't want to be time traveling with anxiety especially in a negative way if you're going to time travel at least do it in a positive way at least anticipate something good happening if the bad thing does happen feeling bad about it now is not going to change anything all right you might as well just wait till it happens and feel bad about it then all right no need to no need to put yourself through double jeopardy and when you're time traveling you're missing the present moment and you can't give your best to the present moment if you're not paying attention to the present because your mind is on the future. And we all know humans can only focus on what? One thing at a time. And anyway, if you're not doing your best in the present because you're not giving your attention to the present, you're not giving your focus to the present, that will automatically make your future worse because the present is the seed of your future. I hope I didn't lose anybody with that, with everything that I just said there. So let me back up and say it one more time. If the bad thing that you're anticipating, when you're feeling anxiety about something that you think bad might happen in the future, if it does actually come to fruition, let's say that you're right to feel anxious because a bad thing does happen, feeling bad about it now before it actually happens is not gonna change the bad thing happening tomorrow. And anyway, if you're time traveling into the future feeling negative about it or even positive sometimes, you are missing out on the present moment, which means you can't give your best to the present moment because humans can only focus on one thing at a time. If you're not focused on what you're doing right now, you probably aren't doing it as well as you could be doing it. Actually, let me erase the probably. You definitely are not doing it as well as you could be doing it in the present, which means your future will automatically be worse because whatever you do today will be reflected in your life tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that, metaphorically speaking. So you see, when you're anxious about something that bad that might happen in the future, even if it does, you're making it twice as bad because first of all, it's going to happen anyway. So you wasted the present moment thinking about it. And second of all, you made your future even worse because you weren't being good right now. You didn't plant a good seed for yourself. You didn't plant tomorrow's seed very well because you weren't focused on the way you were planting it because you were already thinking about tomorrow. This is why you got to take control of your anxiety. And the simple way to do this is stop trying time traveling. Focus on the present moment, deal with things as they come. You will figure out how to deal with them because you are filling the blank with your age. You're that many years old and you've dealt with everything up to this point that you're still alive and you're, you have a data plan and access to Wi-Fi and a device, uh, which means you're doing pretty well uh, compared to the rest of the world. So I think you will make it through the next thing that happens in your life, even if you're very anxious about it right now. Point number three. Today's topic are three energies that you must learn to control. The third one is anger. Now, episode 109, going all the way back to, to 2016, I talked about handling anger in a mature way. I've talked about anger in many other episodes as well, but that's the one that I want to point out to you. Again, you can access that fully in the game group. For any athletes, let's say specifically, or anyone else, anger can help us at times as long as we learn to channel it into positive actions. There was episode number, I don't have a number in front of me right here, but there was an episode where I talked about why we perform so well when we get angry. And this doesn't have to be, this can be for a sport, this can be in business, this can be over a long-term period in life. If anyone ever heard of, 
I heard of sometimes they say a woman goes and gets the, the breakup body, right? She's in a relationship with a guy and a relationship ends and maybe it doesn't end well. So the woman wants to get revenge or not the breakup body, the revenge body. So then they go get in shape. They go go to the gym. They get themselves looking really good. So then when the guy sees that girl again, he's jealous. Like, damn, I, I got out of a relationship with that. Or maybe she pays a visit to the doctor and gets it all done much quicker. I mean, that's happening these days, too. It's not act like it's not. So. I'm telling you all, I'm bringing that up to say this. When we're angry, that energy can actually be used for positive outcomes if we learn to control it. As long as we learn to channel our anger into positive actions that will actually help us and move us forward, anger is a very useful tool. And it often, as I talked about earlier, this is an energy that most of us would consider a negative energy that we don't want to have too much of because it raises cortisol levels in us. And it's hard to sleep when you have a high level of cortisol and you're angry. It's hard to go to sleep. It's hard to relax when you're angry. But if we use it the right ways and in the right times and maybe learn to dissipate it, man. So instead of taking all this anger we feel right now and trying to figure an outlet for it just today and tomorrow, how about we use this anger over the course of the next five years to move our careers forward, move our businesses or our athletic endeavors forward or whatever it is that we're doing. This anger can help you do better business, work harder, work longer, stick to a task longer than you would have. Anger is basically like steroids. Any of y'all know anything about how steroids works, which I don't know from experience, but I know from what I've read and heard that what steroids does doesn't actually make your muscles bigger or make you faster or stronger. What steroids does is allow your body to recover faster, which means you can work out more often. Instead of working out one hour a day, every day for 10 days, you can work out two hours a day. Or maybe you can work out twice a day simply because the steroids allow your body to recover much quicker and then you get to the point that maybe you had too much muscle because you're working out so much your body can't handle it. But anger is like a steroid. It gives you more energy. It doesn't actually make you better specifically. The anger itself didn't make you better. The anger sharpens your focus. Anger heightens your focus. You pay more attention. You are able to stay around longer. You're able to deal with pain and setbacks and things not working out and continue to go because that anger is driving you. But it only works when you learn to control the anger and again, spread the anger out over time. Don't allow the anger to just explode out of you all at once. You may do great things in that one period, but then you're going to you're gonna drop. It's like a sugar high. So controlling your anger is a discipline. So notice that I'm not telling you not to get angry. All right, we all will get angry at times. Just learn to use it. Discipline yourself to, con- to channel that anger into what you actually want. So for example, if you're an athlete, you might be mad at the coach who benched you or in business, you might be mad at the boss who fired you or in relationships, the guy or girl who broke up with you or a person who did you wrong, who was a friend. But if we use that anger in an unhealthy way, we may end up lashing out and it bursts out of us and that could actually hurt us more than it helps us. Often that doesn't produce a positive result for us in the long run. But if we channel that anger into actions that move us forward, that energy can produce results for us for much longer than the initial situation even existed. So if you get fired by a boss, that might only been, maybe you just were head button with the boss for six months and then they fired you in six minutes, but then you can use that energy, that anger for the next six years. The coach might bench you after one week of being on the team, but you can use that anger and that energy to fuel the rest of your, your entire athletic career. So it doesn't have to, the, the result of you channeling the anger doesn't is not limited to the amount of time it took you to to have that anger brew up and become what it is. So if you learn to channel these energies, again, you'll be able to utilize them and get more of what you want in life. And again, as I as we recap today's topic, remember something: energy is a very important tool. You need, and it's not. Let me not even say it's very important. That's diminishing its value. Energy is a requirement for success. If you have no energy, you won't be able to achieve anything. You won't even get started. So don't think that the only energies that will work for you to achieve are the energies that we have socialized and believed to be positive. You can use these negative energies. You just have to become conscious of them. Pay attention to what energies you're feeling and learn how to channel them in a mature, disciplined way. And you may not bat 1000 with this there may be times when you slip up but just catch yourself when you slip up and then get back on the horse where you're supposed to be as we recap the energies that you must learn to control number one fear 
Fear has its place. It keeps us safe, keeps us reasonably cautious, but our lives are relatively safe. So we end up being afraid of things that don't have any reason. There's no reason for us really to be afraid of them. So the better you learn to control your fear and channel into action rather than inaction, a whole lot of great things will start happening for you. And you'll have a leg up on everyone else who's not listening to this right now. And they allow fear to stop them or slow them down, which leads to us talking about point number two, anxiety. Talking in episode 1109 about the leading anxiety. Anxiety and excitement are the same energy. They're both some anticipation of something happening in the future for which we're going to need some energy, right? Fear is an energy. So anxiety is fear in advance. And excitement is happiness in advance. Anxiety is like a payday loan you're making on fear, which is a waste of time because you're doing a couple of bad things to you yourself all at the same time. Because first of all, the thing you're anxious about may never even happen. Second of all, it may happen and not hurt you. And third, even if it does happen and it does hurt you, there's no need to feel bad about it now. You might as well wait until it happens to feel bad about it. Why waste today and tomorrow? Feel bad tomorrow. Feel good today. So if the thing does happen and it hurts you, don't time travel into the future because then you're missing the present moment. And remember that whatever you do in the present moment is planting a seed for your future moments. And if you're not present in the present moment, you're not focused in the present moment, you are not giving your best to the present, which means your future is not going to give its best to you. And point number three, anger. Episode 109, listen to for about hang, handling anger for an athlete, for a business person, for the person who got uh, dumped or divorced from. Anger can help channel you to do better things, to better yourself, work harder, work longer, stick to a task longer than you would have. But it only works this way if you learn to control the anger and spread it out over time. Because success, again, is not something you do one time. Success is something that we do on an ongoing basis, right? So, which means controlling your energies and channeling them is a discipline, especially anger, which is one of the most powerful energies any of us can utilize if we learn to control it. So you could be mad at somebody who did you wrong, but if you if that results in an outburst, yes, maybe you'll feel good in the moment, you'll get some instant gratification, but in the long run, either it'll hurt you more than it helped you, or even if it helped you in the moment, you can't keep helping yourself with that same burst because the burst is gone. You utilize it all in one shot. So often this doesn't produce the kind of results that we want, but if we learn to channel the energy into actions that move us forward, that anger can produce results for us much longer, that last much longer as well than the initial situation that even existed to create the anger in the first place. Now, of all these things that we talked about here today, I've touched on these topics in several different episodes of this show, but I don't want to have to just tell you that. I want you to go see for yourself, which is why I want you to go to workonmygame.com slash game group, where you can get access to the game group membership, where we have six courses that are exclusive to the game group. One of them is about mental toughness, another about being unapologetic, another selling yourself, another stepping up your toughness and dealing with other people. Another about controlling your time. It's called 25 hours. There's another called motivation on a million. There's a bunch of other material in there. In addition to over 800 hours of audio material straight from yours truly, Dre Baldwin, all in the game group membership. And I'm going to give you a 14 day free trial access to the membership. So go to workonmygame.com slash game group and you will get access to the game group membership for free for 14 days to utilize anything and everything that is part of that membership and then you can make your decision from there and i guarantee your decision will be to stick around work on your game dre all day